Welcome to the uh, NHS R&D department where if it's hard, we make it here. We don't make clothing, backpacks, anything soft like that, but this department's responsible for the engineering side of um, wheels, trucks, decks, accessories, grip tape, that type of thing. Welcome to the lab. This is the, I believe, one of the only rooms of its kind in all of skateboarding. Over the years, we decided to um, take on this idea of if you can measure it, what, you can't improve what you can't measure. So I flipped that around and I thought, well, if you can measure it, you can make it better, stronger, faster, and last longer. Uh, and that is the reason for this room is got so tired of differing in opinions, we needed to quantify in some sort of way how long wheels last, how fast they go, how, how good bearings are, how strong decks are. And every one of these pieces of equipment is completely unique. This room is made specifically for putting real world or simulated real world forces on skateboards or wheels bearings and such. Inside here is a the world's only wheel dynamometer. This machine will measure the speed of wheels if you uh, keep the same set of bearings in each uh, test. If you keep the same wheel and swap out bearings it will also measure whose bearings are fastest. So what we'd like to do is give you a, a quick demo of this machine right here. And Chris, would you uh, take over? We're going to be testing uh, right now on this machine um, Indy Blacks, Indy Black bearings. We'll get to those in a second. Um, so we've got a standard wheel, but we'll put different bearings inside. And this is just a demonstration on how the machine works. Um, if we were doing full-blown test on bearings. The uh, mass that's sitting on top of the wheel is one quarter of the mass of a skater. Why one quarter? Wow. Only one wheel. We're gonna get this thing up to 11 miles an hour. Nothing is serendipitous here. 11 miles, miles an hour, excuse me, Chris, is the speed of which you could pretty much push down a sidewalk. So we get it up to 11 miles an hour with the surface similar to a sidewalk without the to does. And this machine is going to slowly ramp it up to 11 miles an hour. And the reason why it's so accurate and it takes some time is through hysteresis, you can put too much voltage to the drive motor and overshoot your 11 miles an hour. So what this is doing is slowly getting up to the 300 RPM. And then once it gets to 300 RPM, it's going to then incrementally drop and raise and drop and raise until we're exactly at 11 miles an hour because we want to be able to stand on the data time and time again, especially if we get challenged. I know we've done some pretty heavy hitting um, marketing videos lately about how uh, Rick to NRGs compare against other wheels and there's a lot of people with you know, hurt feelings, but I want to be able to come back to the machine and demonstrate it time and time again. Um, so. We're at 305 RPM, it's now dropped to 300. Now again, you may bump up to 305 due to just leveling out that hysteresis. Back to 305. So as this is going, what's gonna happen is the computer will recognize it's time to go, drop away the drive wheel. There's an electric eye hiding in a, a dark box here with an IR sensor and it's going to count the ticks on the side of the um, grinding wheel. So while this is coasting to a stop, it's gonna represent about 150 foot to 180 foot long roll. And you'd be shocked at from bearing to bearing to bearing company, how they're very consistent, but they're all very different in how far they'll go. Depending of course on the build of the, um, the uh, the construction of the bearing and also the type of grease they're using and the loading of the grease or loading of the oil. So in a second, it's going to come up with a LED um, number. That happens to be 813. We'll take that information, put it into the database on the spreadsheet. It'll calculate how many feet that uh, wheel traveled and then we'll use that to compare against our own bearings and other bearings. We never just do one test and we never just do one sample, so we'll do multiple samples of each product and do multiple tests and average everything out so we get a good data set we can stand on. And like I said, that 
can either tell you how far a bearing went or how far a wheel would go. In this case, that's how far the bearing went. Now, when you're testing bearings, you test them brand new, and then you artificially age them, and then you beat them up, and then you bring them back into the speed machine to see how far, how, how much all that aging has affected it. In the case of Indy Blacks, this machine and the, the others that I'm going to show you right now have really helped us advance bearings to the point where we can predict how fast they'll go and how long they'll last. Case in point, the Indy Blacks are now put into an artificial dust storm. We named the Haboob, the NHS Haboob. You know why we call it the Haboob? Haboob is uh, an Afghanistan dust storm. So inside here, we lock in the, the bearings in a wheel, and then we've got um, most horribly abrasive silicon carbide dust and aluminum oxide dust and a little RC uh, airplane propeller. <laughs> propeller will kick that stuff into a huge dust storm. Okay, now it's going to take off. There it goes. When we're done with this, we'll take the bearings out and bring them over to our original machine, which was uh, originally made for breaking um, wheel cores. So we'll run this for about 20 minutes. 20 minutes. But we won't do that now. <laughs> run this for about 20 minutes. So we've tested it out of the box. We've hit it with a ton of dust to see how effective those labyrinth or metal shields or seals are. Beat it up with the dust inside. and then bring it back to the speed machine and do a final test and look at the speed results before and after and that'll tell us that'll tell us the quality of the seal, the quality of the build of the bearing and how fast they'll go after two, three weeks worth of uh, abuse in the, um, in the real world. All of these machines aren't built to allow me to make the decision to go to market. All of these machines are there's three reasons. Number one of the most important is that we, um, when you're making a bunch of product to test and innovate, you'll make 30 or 40 products, 30, 40 styles of, let's say, wheel formula. You can't ask a pro rider to test 30 or 40 for you. So what we do is we'll narrow it down to one or two and say, now what do you think? No product leaves this lab and goes to market. Um, we're only the, the front end of it. Then the pro rider can say, good enough, and then we can go to market. So I don't want anyone to get the feeling like this is the most important, the pro rider's opinion is the most important. We just use this to help us narrow down all the, uh, all the different alternatives, and there's hundreds and hundreds. So this is the board breaking machine, but it also is is by dumb luck, actually, we figured out how to measure pop. And for us, pop is um, it's the dynamic flex loading, the picture of how the resonance of a board. It's going to drop from 8 inches, 85 pounds. There you go. So that is the picture of pop. It's literally the 85 pound anvil dropping on the tail, held down by 100 PSI front foot. And the tail loads, stores kinetic energy, releases the anvil up into the air. The top of the, the peak really isn't that important. It's the bottom peak that we study and the um, frequency, whether it's a long frequency or very, whether it's very tight. Also, um, how quickly the board goes to like flat line. I've never actually assigned good or bad to any of these lines, but we look at them and study, and then compare to what a pro rider will bring to us and say they really like the feel of this board. Well, we'll let them decide what's good, uh, not us. We just record it. Okay, we're going to take the uh, pick a pop uh, string off that, which connects it to the computer. What we'll do, this test, we will measure the um, stiffness of a board, which we won't do now. We'll just run the, uh, the 100 drops. 
we measure the static load of the weight, the anvil on the tail, and see what the flex is before the, before the board's ever tested. Record that, do a picture of pop, and then we'll take everything apart and drop the anvil eight inches onto the tail a uh, hundred times. And then we go back, measure the stiffness, and do another picture of pop. So we've got this complete data set of what the board looks like, new, artificially aged, and uh, if it even survives the second uh, picture of pop. Eight inches and 85 pounds is what the boards of the day when we built this should have been able to survive. And what we were surprised to learn is that <laughs> some companies' boards would break at 5, 10, 15. Um, meanwhile, ours were breaking or not breaking at 100. Um, impact. So we recognize quickly that there's a huge difference between all the different manufacturers' boards. Uh, like again, if a pro comes in and says, I've got the shape I really like and it doesn't fit inside any of one of your available shapes, we're able to digitize this with this magical 